If you were with us at all in the season of Lent, we focused on the theme of evil. So if you're a guest today, this was kind of our, our series, In the Face of Evil. It was lots of fun. Yeah, if you missed out, you can go back and hear all about evil again. And we talked about evil is real. It's wicked, it's cruel, it's insidious, it's like cancer. It wants to invade and spread and take over. It has that quality, a viral quality to it. And we talked about the evil that's certainly in the world around us. We also talked about the evil that's closer to home, even inside of us. Recently, I had four funerals in one week. Like in seven days, there were four funerals. And I said, God, that's enough. I'm done with evil. We're done with death. We're ready for Easter. I think you're ready for Easter. I am. We're ready for Easter. We're done with, uh, with evil. It's been heavy. Lent has been long and heavy. The last two years have been heavy. And so today I propose a little bit of levity and laughter. So lucky for you, I brought my exceptionally bad dad joke book. Okay? Now, I have to admit... I've been through two services already. I'm still working on my material. I don't have it refined yet, so just bear with me. I haven't got it down. Here's, here's one. To whoever stole my copy of Microsoft Office, I will find you. You have my word. <laughs> uh, let's see. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Okay, this one I heard this last week from a friend. Um, what's green and fuzzy and can kill you if it falls from a tree? A pool table. <laughs> Get it? Okay. That one, eh, eh, so so. Okay, here's another one. Why can't a T Rex clap its hands? It's extinct. <laughs> okay. Maybe a C minus. All right, let's see. I got. Deep tracks, deep tracks. Where am I going here? All right. Um, okay, just give me a moment. I'm working. Uh, no, not, not that one. That's not a good one. Um, oh, doctor, I've broken my arm in several places. The doctor says, well, don't go to those places. <laughs> okay. All right, a little better. Oh, where's that? where's that one? Oh, last night my wife and I watched three movies back to back. Luckily, I was the one facing the TV. <laughs> <sighs> All right. <laughs> My kids are just like. <laughs> All right. That's, uh, my material doesn't go very far with them. Thank you for bearing with me a little bit. Why are we here today? What's the big deal? Well, I want to propose that something kind of funny happened a couple millennia ago on this day. Uh, I want to propose that the resurrection is a little bit humorous and the account has some levity to it, as we have it recorded. Uh, first of all, women show up at the tomb. There's no body in the grave. It's empty. So they go to the disciples. They rush in. They tell them. And then the disciples, like, they're, they're in shock. They can't believe it. And then we get this in Luke 24. It says that these words seem to them like an idle tale. An idle tale. Are you serious? Is this a joke? Are you joking? Who are the first witnesses of the resurrection? Who showed up first? It was the women, which shouldn't be funny, but in the first century, women were sort of second class. It was a male-dominated society. And so the testimony of women uh, was not as credible as that, of that as a man. And so if God was smart, he would have had Peter and John be the first witnesses of the resurrection. If he was smart, but God's funny. He says, hey, I'm going to let the girls go first. They're going to witness it first. I think God laughs. I think he has a sense of humor. Later that day, kind of in the evening, two disciples are walking back to a town called Emmaus. They're going on the road. And this is one of my favorite stories. Jesus shows up, but he's in disguise. We don't know how, but some, for some reason they don't recognize him, that it's him. 
Uh, they think it's just another dude on the road. And so he just starts walking with them and talking. And he says, what are you talking about? What, what's the topic of conversation? And they reply with this. They say, are you the only traveler to Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have happened? It's funny. You should laugh. And then he said to them, huh, what things? That, do you get it? That's funny. Jesus is playing with them on the road. Later, even into the evening, he shows up with his disciples in a room. And if you've ever lost someone, you know that there can be a, a period of denial and fog and haze. And they're in that period, that, that phase. So they, they, he shows up and they think he's a ghost. They think that he's a, a spirit. They're hallucinating something. So Jesus says, hey, do you have anything to eat? Uh, hey, you're going to eat that? <laughs> And so then one of the disciples, Luke doesn't say that they said anything. He, he, said, he doesn't record that they said a word. But one of them apparently grabbed a piece of fish off the plate and handed it to him. And he starts eating it. And I'm picturing the disciples just watching him. And Jesus is probably having fun just eating in front of them this piece of fish. It's funny. God laughs at the, the absurdness of the resurrection. Psalm 2 in the book of Psalms, the second psalm was written a thousand years before Jesus arrived. And yet, from the earliest days, Christians have always believed Psalm 2 was really about Jesus, prophetically about Jesus Christ. We believe that, even though it was written a thousand years prior. What's Psalm 2 all about? Psalm 2 talks about the rulers of the world, the kings of the nations, the forces and authorities of the world are all set against Jesus Christ. They're all opposed to him. So what does God do when they're opposed to his anointed one, the king. Psalm 2, verse 4. He who sits in the heavens laughs. He holds them in derision, laughs at his opponents and his enemies. 1 Corinthians 15 is the great resurrection chapter in Paul's letter to the Corinthians. At the end of this chapter, comes like a verse. It might have been a chorus to a song, or it may have been a poem. But in this, this verse, Paul mocks death. He laughs at death. This is 1 Corinthians 15. Why don't you read this with me? Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? He mocks and laughs at death. A German theologian, Jürgen Moltmann, it's a funny name. Just say Jürgen, okay? And if you're expecting a child that's going to be a boy, name it Jürgen. Every time you say his name, you'll laugh. Jürgen Moltmann, a German theologian, thanks to Pastor Paul for sharing this with me this week. He says, Easter is the beginning of the laughter of the redeemed. Since the earliest times, Easter hymns, have celebrated the victory of life by laughing at death, by mocking at hell, and by making the lords of this world absurd. Because it seemed like hell won, that Jesus was dead. He was a corpse in a grave. God lost. So isn't it just God's way to respond in the most ridiculous wildest, most absurd, even funny manner. The corpse was in the grave. All of a sudden, in the grave, his lungs start to fill with air again, start to absorb oxygen. Heart starts beating again, pumping blood, red blood cells, sticking to oxygen molecules, circulating them throughout the body. Jesus peeled off the grave cloths, the burial cloths. And then he sat up. He sat up. A dead man sat up. And then he stood up and walked out of the grave. Alive. What does this mean? Why is this important? It means that you can say, Death, you have no power over my God. Death, you have no power over me. Jesus wins. God gets the last laugh. Laughter is a protest against evil. Laughter means 
that God's grace is greater than our sin. Laughter means that I am not anxious for this world. Laughter means that I will not fear death. It's the laughter of the redeemed. And today, you're allowed to laugh. At this point, I want to be careful because I don't want to make light of death or of evil. I don't want to make a joke of it. Some of you might really be hurting. You might be facing, staring down a particular evil or death itself. And that hurts. And that's real. We don't deny it. Christians don't deny the severity of evil or death. We acknowledge it. You might say, Pastor, nothing, nothing's going to change. Pastor, I'm alone. Pastor, I'm stuck. My family's ripped apart. There's no way to put it back together. Uh, he's not here this year, and he's never coming back. My body's failing, and I'm not getting any answers. It's hard to laugh, even smile, when you're staring at evil or at death. The death of a child is a particular cruelty and evil. In the fall, I did a funeral, a, a graveside committal for the death of a stillborn child. And, uh, you know, there's this little box, a little tiny coffin. We brought it to the grave on a cold day and put it in the ground with the family. And the dad of the child asked to do kind of a, a unique, maybe strange thing. He asked if he could be the one to shovel the dirt on the coffin. And so we arranged it with the cemetery and it came time for that to happen and he picked up the shovel and started shoveling the dirt on and everybody's crying. Now, the, the coffin only goes a couple feet down, not, not six, just it's pretty shallow. But you'd be surprised how much dirt that still is. There's a little pile of dirt, and he gets in and he starts scooping it, and then he starts to sweat in his suit, and he's breathing heavy, and he stops, and he looks at me, and he says, Pastor, it, it seemed like a good idea. And then he started to laugh. And then we all started to laugh, kind of at him. And we watched him struggle. We watched him sweat. And he finished it, every scoop. And we just kind of laughed as we watched him. And then we sang, Abide With Me. Except at that point, we sang it with smiles on our faces. And then we spoke the words you heard earlier. We, with a little bit of laughter and mocking at death, we said, Death, where is your victory? Where is your sting? And then... We threw flowers on that dirt. And as we did so, we smiled and even chuckled and said, Jesus wins. And we walked away back to our cars in a peculiar kind of joy, even at a miserable situation. You might be tired, weary, worn, bruised, battered. You might feel like a, an old weathered flag shredded apart by the wind. But if Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, then your worst moment is not the end. The worst thing that can happen to you is not the end because death is not defeat. If Jesus is risen, you can stare it down. You can even shovel dirt on a grave and say with confidence that Christ is risen. You can laugh at the devil. You're allowed to do that. Martin Luther did it all the time. You can laugh at the devil with these words, Christ is risen. He is risen Hallelujah. You might be facing something incredibly difficult, but claim those words as your own. Claim that name as your own and speak it. Christ is risen. He is risen Hallelujah. 
What happened on a Sunday matters for Monday and Tuesday and every day on which you live on this planet. And you can face every day in hope, maybe some tears, but in confident hope and even joy and even laughter because you claim the name of Jesus that Christ is risen. Take it up a level. Christ is risen. Amen.